Welcome back to Protecting and Preserving Wealth. I am John Jagay. I'm joined by Bruce Hostler and Alex Corey of Hossler Wealth Management. Gentlemen, great to be with you as always. Good morning. Great to be with you, John. Good morning, John. So today we're talking about refinancing your retirement. Most of us are familiar with the concept of refinancing a home mortgage, car loan, but I gotta say, I've never heard the concept of refinancing your retirement. Over the last couple of years, we've seen interest rates skyrocket really to levels we hadn't seen since the early to mid 2000s. And although the news might be telling you that higher interest rates are bad, Alex and Bruce are here to tell you why higher interest rates can be a good thing actually, and why you'd wanna consider locking in these long-term higher interest rates right now before the interest rates fall again. So Bruce, let's start at the basic level here. What does it mean to refinance your retirement? Well, John, these higher rates have given us opportunities to lock in high income payouts on annuities and annuity living benefits that we have not seen in maybe 15 years. And so these higher rates allow people to look at what they have where their money's invested and potentially lock in income guarantees that we haven't seen in a very long time. Okay, so what are, Alex, some of the benefits to refinancing your retirement now? Think about it this way. What we're trying to accomplish is buying more income with fewer dollars Mm -hmm. and then be able to reinvest the rest of that for the long term. So we think about pre-inflation of what we experienced over the last few years, plus the higher interest rates, people were having to use a a lot more money just to get the income that they were trying to generate for themselves. Now, with rates being higher than what they are, think about it. If you have higher rates at, say, 5%, 6 7% on bonds, money market funds, and annuities like we're talking about here, that means potentially you can use less of your money today to get more money out of those dollars. And then you can reinvest the rest for the long term, look for some other goal planning, you know, really think strategically about how you're using your money today. The thing is though, rates aren't going to stay this high forever and eventually yeah. they're going to come down. So when that happens, it may be too late to consider refinancing uh, your retirement at that point. Alex started to hit on this a little bit, but who should be thinking ideally about refinancing their retirement? So everybody, I mean, even if you're in your forties, you could potentially be thinking with these higher interest rates, locking in some of these living benefits, if you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s, anybody right now that has money, repositioning that correctly to replace maybe another annuity or something that doesn't have a strong income stream or other investments, whether it's fixed income or whatever, to guarantee a portion of their retirement with these living benefits right now with the higher interest rates that we're seeing that we have not seen in a while, they should all be thinking about this. That's a fair point. We touched on this in a previous episode. I've been reading about this as well, that there's currently six trillion, that's trillion with a T, dollars sitting in money market funds on the sidelines, earning you know roughly 5% for investors that deposit their cash there. Uh, that's pretty good, right, Alex? It's very good. You know, in fact, we still have a lot of our own clients with a portion of their investments in money market funds for that ex- exact purpose. But the problem is two things is eventually when rates go down, the money market interest rates you're earning will go down as well. And that may be a trigger sign to a lot of, not just institutional investors, but also retail investors that says, hey, I need to do something else with my money. And by that point, again, what we're talking about is if we see the outflow from money market funds, it's going to find its way into other sources. And what happens to those other sources that we're referring to, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, is rates will come down again, prices will go up, and you lose the opportunity to lock in the gains for the long term, like we're really suggesting here. So Who knows how fast that's actually going to happen and at what rate or when it's going to start. But we want to be ahead of the curve here and be a little bit more proactive. So why should investors consider, Bruce, reallocating their cash right now? Well, their their cash is getting a good rate right now in the short term. Yeah. But as you hear in the news, we're probably expecting the Federal Reserve sometime by the middle of the year, June, July, August, to start lowering the interest rates. And, And when they do that, the market may anticipate that before they do or right when they do. And so those money market accounts that might be paying close to 5% right now, that may fall off a cliff very quickly. And now these people are scrambling Mm. to try and find somewhere where they can get yield. So you have the opportunity right now while these rates are higher to kind of lock in the opportunity of tying these rates up for a longer period of time. So that's the why. How about the where, Alex? Where should investors be allocating their cash to if they're moving it around? So we have a few different areas that 
we're really focused on right now in particular bonds. For most people that are more conservative, that are all retired, that seems like the most logical place to go uh, with investing or reallocating some of your money for the same purpose. Again, if you can lock in for the next three to five years, rates even higher than 5%, that's a pretty good deal. Looking at the equity markets, same thing, dividend paying stocks may be a good area to take a look at as well. There's still a lot of room for, we believe, the market to run here over the next, say, 12 months or so. And even real estate, for people that have been sitting on the sidelines as well, the same thing applies is folks that are waiting for rates to come down in, in mortgage rates. Even if you're not retired and you're looking to buy a, a home, let's say, as an example, you know, think about looking at that now as an opportunity because if the prices of homes are lower and rates are higher, and most people are scared by the higher interest rates on mortgages, you get in now. Rates will come down eventually. You can then refinance down the road in the future and lock in lower rates that way, just the same. So those are the three main key areas, but that's where we feel like the most of the money will flow to uh, once rates start coming down and when the Federal Reserve starts lowering their federal funds rate as well. Or for that matter, even if they used a variable interest loan, so when the rates come down, that loan can adjust down lower. Fair point. So we all know that in January of this year, the stock market has reached all-time highs. And if we compare this to January of 2022, when the market was also at the previous all-time high, we're still undervalued in today's market by about 8 to 10% less than we were back then. Hmm. And yeah, earnings have surprised everyone. Really good earnings. We still have a very strong consumer out there. And this is a good scenario for stocks to continue to have the justification to potentially run higher into 2024 in a presidential election year, by the way, is typically the second best year of a four-year presidential election cycle. Alex, any other areas you're seeing opportunity for investments in 2024? Uh, Yes. So private equity is one area that really has been talked a little bit about, but not really presented to many clients or or investors because the misconception out there is you have to have a lot, a lot of money to be able to invest in private companies. Yeah. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case any longer because private equity realizes that there are individuals and families out there that do have significant wealth, that they can invest in similar tools in private equity markets. And why we justify encouraging our clients to allocate some of their money there just as well is you're diversifying your holdings, not just being all in the public markets, which we know are very volatile. If you could have a sleeve of your investment portfolio in a private equity fund, that doesn't go up and down with the market every day, that is justifiably marked to a true valuation of those companies, we see that as a great opportunity to hedge against some of your other risk out there in the market. Non-correlation. Correct. And then as well, you know, we always talk about the Magnificent Seven, that still is a a real thing, but there is going to be a lot of opportunity in the marketplace to buy other stocks at discounts that haven't paid attention or been treated fairly in the market that still are good companies that make a lot of money, that are profitable, that have low debt. So they still are opportunistic uh, ways you can invest your money now as well. So in previous episodes of the podcast, we've talked about the specific strategy that you guys use at Hostler Wealth Management regarding your clients. But for some of our new listeners, especially Bruce, tell us a little bit about your income strategy for retirement and what makes Hostler different from other advisors out there. Well, first of all, we are very aware of sequence of return risk. Mm Mm-hmm. And we use a buckets of money approach. So in the life of a retiree, if you imagine, you know, one to five years, six to 10 years, 10 to 15 and 16 to 20, in those first 10 years, we don't really want clients taking a lot of risk in the stock market in those early years. We want to use fixed income. We want to use annuities or other vehicles that have guarantees. So if the market drops too early in your retirement, you get to 65 and you retire and you have three negative years and you're drawing down money out of your portfolio at the same time the market's dropping, your portfolio may not be able to recover. And that's what we call sequence of return risk. We're very aware of that. We use financial planning software. We plan our investments around that. And then again, we'll use things like annuities uh, to guarantee income. But we're very cautious about that because we think that the biggest expense that many people have, and they don't realize that over their lifetime, is taxes. Mm. And if you're taking non-qualified money and you're putting that into annuity, you're taking capital gain potential taxes and you're turning it into ordinary income. And we're not really big fans of that. So we like to see perhaps in an IRA, if it's already going to be ordinary income, then we may use some of that for an annuity. 
but we may break those annuities up into size annuity contracts so you can convert one of those each year to a Roth IRA. And we give you a path to be able to convert your IRA to a Roth that way, even though you're buying an annuity and you're getting guarantees on that. The other bucket we like is if you have your Roth IRA, which is long-term money, and you want to buy one of these you know, income benefits for the rest of your life, and it's going to generate tax-free income when you finally turn it on, that's not a bad place to be either. I mean, that takes care of the retirement piece of it, but there's also the working years piece of it. So Alex, what about the financial planning process at Hosser Wealth Management? How does that help retirees reach their long-term goals? So we work with a lot of successful people that have accumulated significant wealth because they had a plan. And that's accumulating assets. Yeah. And everyone has that plan. Save more than you spend and you're going to have enough money to be able to retire one day. The problem is that we've all been conditioned in the same way to assume, well, that's how you should be re- investing over your entire lifetime. So when they come talk to us for their initial complimentary consultation, most people don't have a strategy or even an idea about how to protect their money, spend it responsibly, and they haven't considered all the risks like Bruce talked about, taxes, sequence of returns risk, and even long-term care as a bigger risk further down the road. So there's a lot more tools that we can use and people should consider using to create that roadmap to success because as time goes on, as we realize People want to spend their money. They want to enjoy what they've earned over their lifetimes or what they've actually saved. They don't just have a a tool or outlet to actually express that in a a way which actually allows them to spend the money that they want to and accomplish long-term goals, such as legacy planning or charitable giving, as an example. So we create the roadmap, and then you have a plan for every year that's dynamic because we know life is going to not be a straight line. Yeah, It's going to go up and it's going to go down. We're going to have good times and bad times. So why wouldn't you want to have a roadmap to complement where you're trying to get to over your entire lifetime? Well, they say in marriage vows, sickness and health. This is a financial plan for sickness and health, both uh, health-wise and financially, right? That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct, John. Bruce, what other things should retirees consider when uh, refinancing their retirement? Back to our original point here. Well, just like Alex was saying, uh, there's static financial planning, which someone prints your financial plan. And you put it on the shelf and you say, oh, I have my financial plan. But dynamic financial planning, you need a plan that is on the computer, online, that you have access to. And the markets go up and down. You can look at it and see your statistical probability that you're going to be successfully okay. But when it comes to planning this retirement, it doesn't hurt to, in refinancing your retirement, perhaps some of your fixed income or that, maybe you lock in some of these rates long term in an annuity right now, especially with the higher living benefits that we're seeing right now, Mm -hmm. you lock that in for income for the rest of your life. That's the opportunity that we see right now. If you just, you get a bond or a fixed income mutual fund, that might give you five to seven years, but we're talking locking in rates for 10, 20, 30 years, the rest of your life. This is a unique opportunity in our minds. What we're seeing right now, allocating part of your portfolio to lock in some of those gains, that's probably wise for someone to do that. Not all your money, just a sliver of it that you would have as a guaranteed income for the rest of your life. What really strikes me about our conversation today, gentlemen, is that you have a dynamic plan that changes for your clients and the advice changes. We're talking about uh, the unique circumstances that we're facing here as we record this on February 13th of 2024. Before we wrap up, Bruce, Alex, anything else you want our listeners to know? I'd say this, when it comes to retirement planning, it's a lot different than again, accumulating wealth during your working years. You should come into a conversation with an open mind about what else is available. We talk about different tools and tool sets that we can use to help you create the retirement that you desire to have. Apart from the traditional recommendations of most advisors out there that are only focused on asset allocation models of stocks and just bonds, as an example. Mm. There's way more out there that's available Right now, there's not a lot of risk in the markets and the economy, but we always know there's going to be events that occur in the future. We want to protect against those risks before they actually happen. And the tools that we're talking about here today can help you accomplish that and have a more successful, peaceful, and enjoyable retirement. I just want to talk about for a second the change in technology that's taken place in the financial industry. You know, a lot of times if we talk about annuities, a lot of people have negative views of those because for many years in the insurance industry, they've had big upfront commissions, 
long surrender charges and locked people into very low rates. Oh, yeah. And we're not talking about those type of vehicles today. We're talking about fee-based annuities that are flexible and can let you get in and out of them and can provide you with these living benefits that you can choose. But if life changes, you're not locked in. You have flexibility. So we have everything up and down the scale. And so people have preconceived notions. And I just want to remind everyone, hey, these rates are high right now. You can lock in some choices. But what used to be your grandfather's annuity is not the annuities that are available today. Just like, (laughs) you know, your mom and dad have a flip phone and, and they don't have a smartphone and they can't run that. But you have a smartphone, and that's the same thing with the annuities today. There is a lot of new innovation in these financial instruments that is very new and different than what people have experienced in the past. Please don't get me started on my parents and cell phones. That's a whole other podcast. (laughs) (laughs) If our listeners want to know more about how you do things at Hosser Wealth Management or really have any questions about planning their financial future, including their retirement, how do they best find you? You know, they can reach us on the web at our website, hostlerwm.com, hostler, H-O-S-L-E-R-W-M.com, or reach us at Scottsdale here, 480-994-7342, or up in Prescott, 928-778-7666. Great stuff as always today, gentlemen. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Forward-looking commentary should not be misconstrued as investment or financial advice. The advisor associated with this podcast is not monitored for comments, and any comments should be given directly to the office at the contact information specified. Any tax advice contained in this communication, including any attachments, is not intended or written to be used and cannot be used for the purpose of, one, avoiding federal or state tax penalties, or two, promoting, marketing, or recommending to another party any transaction or matter addressed herein. The accuracy, completeness, and timeliness of the information contained in this podcast cannot be guaranteed. Accordingly, Hostler Wealth Management LLC does not warranty, guarantee, or make any representations or assume any liability with regard to financial results based on the use of the information in this podcast.